Where's my chat bubble? Hold up. We are officially live now. Yeah, yeah. Let me hit up the homies. see you come in. Uh, how, how's it been? How's life treating you and whatnot? Welcome to the fifth horseman. Um, just gathering the crowd so you just have to give me a second and then we'll get this adventure started. I'm pretty hyped for this game, not gonna lie. Mainly because it came out literally yesterday. Um, there I am. I want to show the profile, I just want to show the... Here we go. Check this. Give me that link. Give me that link. How, how have you been? How has life been treating you, my guy? I've been going good. Going out. Oh, you've been going out. What y'all got? You ain't tell me you had a girl. I'm feeling all left out now. It's still new. How, how new are we talking? It's like a, a couple weeks, a couple days, a couple hours, a couple years. I'm kidding. If, if it was a couple years, then it was still considered new. I don't know. <laughs> That'd be so weird for a relationship. For it to be like, oh yeah, this is, we've been, we've been dating for a couple years now and it's still kind of new to me. <laughs> like, how does that even work? But, um. the link from here. That's good enough, I guess. Coffee. Okay. All right, that's done. That is taken care of. Let's. All right. Uh, it's a month and a few days. I'm loving her, bro. But hey, we gotta hang out while you're home before you leave the state again. Yeah, man. Gonna be going back. August, yeah, August sometime. But um, on real quick, one time for the one time. Hello, everyone. That was weak and pathetic. Oh lord. And I'm almost out of soda. Do I have any? I have more soda. There's, there's hope for us all. Hello, everyone. It's Saxy JoJo here, bringing you the Fifth Horseman, which dropped uh, literally yesterday by this guy named Angelo. I'm not sure if that's his actual name or not, but that's his name on uh, Discord. Um, um, he mentioned it, uh, that he worked on it in this other Discord that I'm in for this game that he's in the process of helping other people develop called Eternal Hope, which I'm excited to play that game. What up, Ice Queen? I'm excited to play the game when that comes out. I don't know when, but left, right, 
up down up down be a start okay but um once eternal hope drops i'm gonna be playing that too because uh angelo's a cool dude uh the other people working on eternal hope is a, they're cool people you know they're really nice and friendly and stuff like that um i'll leave a link to the discord and also to this game in the description once the stream is over with um but yeah this is supposed to be like a pick your own path kind of game i know i feel all fancy now but um it's a pick your own path set in the uh, in a medieval apocalypse so don't know how long it's going to take us to beat this game i just know that i'm probably going to have a lot of fun you know the last refugee for mankind is the city of eden war hunger and disease decimated almost the entire oh also if i'm if i'm too low make sure to just whoa i unlocked a lot of achievements i guess i don't know what's that's hilarious. It, it was just freaking out over here. Uh, but if at, at any point, like, the music is too loud or something, let me know, because I can't tell, you know? These are the things you're going to have to let... Uh, but, yeah, so just... I mean, turn the music down a tad. See? And you were just going to let it keep playing like this. Shame on you. Uh, let's... Let's go over here. Let's, let's tweak it from here. Let's put it, like, right there-ish. How about... I mean, I don't want it too low. It looks like it's not even... It looks like it's extremely low at this point. Mm, how about there? Yeah, how about now? Are we doing good now? No, I didn't realize how loud it was. Uh-huh. I'm uh, sure that's the case. Alright. War, hunger, and disease decimated almost the entire population of the planet. Awesome sauce. The To the volume being better, not to... <laughs> <laughs> Not to the population be decimated. That's a that's a whole new level of bad. A period in history known as the Dark Ages. Humanity is on the verge of extinction, and after years of resistance, evil has finally found a way to infiltrate the city. Oh my! What do you value most? Uh, mm, uh, I like family, but I also like freedom, but I also like fortune. So you can see how I'm in a bit of a pickle here. You know what I'm saying? But I guess if I had to pick... Uh, this is tough. <laughs> and now we'll, all y'all go judge me for whatever I pick. You're gonna be like, you didn't pick that over that? What are you doing? But, um... I, I'm gonna go freedom. I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit a freedom. You're given the task of training an animal to assist you in future battles. Which ones do you choose? A dog, a raven, a horse, a boar? Um... I'm gonna go with boar, just because boars are extremely dangerous. Or, don't get me wrong, horses are pretty cool too, you know, ride one into battle and whatnot. But if that horse gets knocked down, it's, it's basically donezo. A dog, uh, a dog is probably like, would probably be my, like my second pick. You know what I'm saying? Because dogs are, dogs can be quite deadly when they want to be. A raven, uh, I wouldn't, I don't think I would be able to depend on a raven. Uh, walk into a city, you hear a scream coming from an alley next to you. What do you do? Pretend you didn't hear anything. Walking, run as fast as you can to help the person in need. Form the authorities. Tell the voices in your head to stop messing with you. <laughs> can I just pick, can I pick the last one just because it's funny? Good. Is that okay? Hey! Glad you were able to make it. This is Angelo. Oh, man. Look, 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 look. If I tell the voices in my head to stop messing with me, does that mean they're going to continue their prank? That is the real question. Um, I'm not going to. I'm not going to not hear anything. I can't. I can't do option one because that's me. But I'm also not the type of the, that runs head first into like problems. Kanye West. <laughs> oh yeah, his Ye album. I actually liked his Ye album. Contrary to what most people think about it. Form the authorities. <sighs> I think I got to go with the last one just because that that one. That one got me. After your death, what will you be remembered for? My perseverance, my sense of judges, my looks, my arrogance. Not, 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 bleh. English very hard. Not my arrogance. Not my looks, because I'm like a decent at best. Uh, sense of justice. I mean, I'm kind of hard headed. I'm too black for all of You were right. <laughs> I think, I think if I was known for anything, Probably be perseverance if I was known for anything. 
You rolled. All right, cool. Six, seven, six. Wisdom's a five. Okay, yeah, I guess. The main character that we're playing, they have no memory of what is going on. They just wake up, sort of deal. So we're going to be recovering lost memories as we go through this game, which should be interesting to see how that plays out as far as like story progression and like character development and things of that nature. So uh, you see yourself in the middle of a battlefield, people fighting with each other and dozens of bodies lying on the ground. You smell blood in the air and you hear cries of pain and despair. You blink and realize that you are no longer in the field. The sun begins to set on the horizon and you walk through ruins. In front of you is an old man lying on the ground, apparently wounded. You approach him and hear him whisper a few words. A flash of light fills the place, blinding you for a few seconds. Oh, we're dead. Uh, you open your eyes and realize that you are lying in a hospital room. Oh, look at me with the prediction. <laughs> okay, so that means we're not dead, but we probably almost did die. I <laughs> your mind is confused and you wonder if it was all just a dream. In front of you, a woman watches you, getting closer when you when realizing you are awake. She asks for your name, but as much as you try, you can't remember. Your memories are gone and you feel your head aching as you try to remember anything. A strange energy draws you to the city. And you go looking for answers. Go out looking for answers. Alright. Strong start. You know, soldier exploded and we end up in the hospital. Oh. Okay, so let's go to the I'm thinking square. How are you guys feeling? You, you thinking square too, or are y'all trying to like go to like the castle? Actually, where my dice at? So that would also be pretty good right now to have out the the good old destiny dice. Actually, I should probably get the third one out now that I think about it because there are three choices all right uh, let's see so I have uh, where's my camera camera is right here let's pull you up to there turn you on briefly I have the blue one which is not even in frame there we go blue and then we got the uh, the cosmic one you know what I'm saying? Which you can hardly see because the light's off. It would probably help if I turn the light on, but you know, effort, and I'm I'm feeling really comfortable right now. We have the red one. So, well, let's turn the camera off now. Uh, let's see. Red will be castle, uh, cosmic will be square, and blue will be outside. So, highest one is gonna win. Let's see. Let's see. 16, 18. Uh, oh. Castle and uh, outside had the highest, so we're gonna re-roll. Oh wow, nat 20. We're going outside, kids. Hope you're ready for this real world immersion. All right. Follow trail, walk. Oh, let's see, let's let's explore the forest. Let's do that. As you walk through the forest, you feel a strange energy drawing you into the woods. Between the trees, you see a yellowish light that gets more intense as you approach. After walking for some time, you reach a glade in the woods and can finally see the sky. In this place. You find ruins of what you believe to have been an ancient temple. In the center of these ruins, you see the yellowish light again. As you get close, you realize it's a bonfire. Oh, 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 wait, who's playing a bonfire in, like, daytime? Suddenly, three bandits appear. Oh, gonna kill them all, speaking horse. Look what we have here. It seems our campfire has attracted yet another prey. I, I should I guess I should have seen it coming. You can't stand cats. Look, if I had to choose between dogs and cats, I'm going dogs. But if I had to choose between dogs, cats, and hummingbirds, I'm going hummingbirds. The other two smile as they approach you, all armed with rusty knives and ripped clothes. Uh, tell them you have nothing of value. Uh, let's see. Uh, I had seven, six in strength, seven in uh, uh, something, and another six. Wisdom was a five. Uh, shoot. I, I feel like I could take them. That's not for you to decide. You try to walk away, but they have you surrounded. One of them pushes you, and the others look into your pocket, searching for coins and food. I already told you I have nothing with me. Oh, wow, I looked really spiffy. Too bad I was clicking so fast that I didn't even realize I was going to get a line. So I'm seeing you'll have to help us in some other way. Do you understand what I mean? You're really hungry, and you give one heck of a meal. 
with one holds you while the other puts a knife to your throat. The third one leaves to rekindle the fire. Did I just die? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I should stop thinking that like every opportunity I'm just dead. Wait, I have a proposal to me. I swear I have something more valuable than my own life. I'm looking at you a curious look. I know the location of a treasure that was buried a long time ago near these ruins. Oh, oh, oh. I didn't believe what you just said. At, at least that's what you think. After a few minutes, the bandits had, the bandit who had gone to rekindle by fire actually to say more about your proposal, but was interrupted by the one holding the knife. Do not believe him. He's just trying to escape. You keep trying to convince him by giving further details of how the treasure was buried and the amount of coins inside. I tell you to shut up, but you direct your words to the ones who seem to believe the story. You there! If you help me kill these two, you won't have to share the treasure with anyone else. Wow, that's... <laughs> Savage. <laughs> help me betray them and you're getting... Nobody here will believe you. He stops talking, realizing the knife he had been holding... Wait. He stops talking, releasing the knife he had been holding to your throat. Blood running down his mouth. And the light in his eyes fades away. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing, but that was such a savage move. Hey fam, if you hope we kill them, you ain't gotta worry about sharing the treasure. Good enough for me. Kill, kill. Like what? <laughs> Promise was enough to convince one of them, making him bury a knife in the throat of the one of his companions. You take the opportunity to headbutt the man who was holding your arm. He screams in pain, his nose breaking in impact. You take the knife out of your hand and cut his throat. Whoa. <laughs> Now I've done my share of the deal, it's your turn to keep your promise, take me to the treasure. Oh! Oh! Why is... Yo! Why is our character such a savage? You approach the man and whisper in his ear, There is no treasure. The man screams in pain and looks startled at you. You take the knife from his stomach and watch as he loses his life. I gain one wisdom point. What a savage! Oh my lord! Alright, so it's day two. We have six strength, seven in dirty, seven dex. Our alignment is still currently good. We already went to outside, so I say let's go to the square. Hopefully, we won't have to stab people again. Uh, let's, uh. Oh, there's an old man. Investigate the posters. <clears throat> As you walk through the square, you see dozens of posters. With portraits of missing children. That can't be good. On your way, you see a woman crying and screaming for the difference. <laughs> On your way, you see a woman crying and screaming for the disappearance of her only son. You approach her, touching her on the shoulder to comfort her. She turns to you frightened, almost falling back. Well, if you come, if you came back to silence me, you better be prepared to die. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, these lines of dialogue are great, man. She ready for it. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's on sight for her. You feel a cold pang in your belly and realize uh, then she's holding a knife pressed against you. Oh. All right, we're gonna we're gonna be civil. I feel like we're gonna we're gonna try and play this timeline in the civil route. We're gonna we're gonna be civil. Uh, she seems to calm down with your question. Apparently. She thought you were somewhere else. Um, how many red-headed guys do you know with a light scar on their face, ma'am? Hopefully not too many, because that's, that's a little concerning for me, because you, you might have slipped my throat at that point. Two nights ago, a man broke into my house and kidnapped my son. I was lying down when I heard noises downstairs. I got up to see what was going on, and then I was surprised by a man in a black hood. He was carrying my son in his arms. I tried to chase after him, but he disappeared into the haze of the night. Wow. Okay. Since then I've been spreading posters in hopes that someone will have some information about them, but so far I got nothing. I tried to talk to the guards, but they said they have more important issues to deal with at the moment. Okay, that's... Uh, you're terrified by her story and think to yourself that if so many children have been disappearing in the last few weeks, chances are her son is already dead. Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry this happened to you. If I get any information, I'll let you know. I hope you find your son. Good golly molly though. That's, that's kind of brutal when you think about it. Like, kids are disappearing, and as a result, they're probably dead. Like, what is happening to them? Are they getting sold off or something? She thinks she wanted you walk away. I gained one endurance point. Is it because I almost got stabbed and my managed to not have that happen to me? Alright, to the castle. Ooh, I like this one. Um, hmm. Let's look for clues in the library. I've been progressively going up the options, so it only makes logical sense. Try to use the cover up. Mm -hmm. Trying to discover your true identity, you enter the castle's library. 
Hundreds of books are spread on several shelves, and as you walk around the place, one of them catches your eye. A book with a black cover, with no apparent writing on the outside. You don't know what it is, but you feel a mysterious energy drawing you to it. Speaking with the husband. What do you think you're doing here? That's not particularly husky, but we're gonna roll with it. You look around you, but you don't see anyone. Knowing you shouldn't be in the library without permission, you try to get the book before the person appears. You reach for the book, but someone interrupts you, squeezing your wrist tightly. Uh-oh. You shouldn't be here! Trying to release you. I'm, I'm just trying to find some record to indicate who I am. You can only access the library if you have a letter signed by a member of the royal family. Get out of here before I make you leave. Look here, sir. I On my first day here, all right, I killed three bandits. I made one of them turn against their two companions that they've known for a far longer time than me. And then I killed him in an act of savagery from a lie that I told him. Don't make me make you like them and put you in the dirt. Ignoring his warning, he picks up the book anyway. The, the giant man comes in your direction with his fist clenched. Let's... Uh, okay. Well, I was talking all that smack, so now I have to fight him. You wait until he gives the first blow. Barely dodging the punch that would knock you down, you take advantage of the small space between the shelves to pass under his legs. With his back turned to you, you kick one of his legs, causing him to fall to his, on his knees. He tries to turn around, but you take two books and use them to smash... To, and use them both to smash his head. The man falls down, unconscious. You, hey, look at me, taking down giant people. Look at that. You open the book, and the first thing you see is a symbol of a, of a hand holding a cross, okay? Reading through the book, you find out about a prophecy of ancient times, which says that one day, when the seals are broken, the horsemen will walk again upon the earth, and when that happens, the end will be near. Huh? Sounds like me? Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> like, I was talking to all that smack, and I'm like, well, I guess I gotta back it up now. You done put me in this position. Congratulations, you played yourself. Um, it also says, only after these events have happened and mankind has been proven worthy, the angels will come from the sky and bring peace to the earth. Something in this prophecy sounds familiar to you, but you can't remember what. You hear noises and decide to leave the castle before someone finds you. I gain a strength point. Alright, chapter 2. Oh, okay. You walk, the city, you walk the streets of the city, still trying to discover your identity. A man runs past you, bumping into your shoulder. You turn back, but he had disappeared into the crowd. After a while, you notice a letter in your pocket. I have information about you. Meet me in the same place in three days. I can't talk now. We're being walked. Wait. Streets of the city. Uh, let me write that down because I'll probably forget. If I'm honest with you, can I be honest with you? Can I be honest with you? Streets of the city. Okay. Streets. Uh, can I be honest with you? Uh, tavern and church. I've unlocked tavern and church. Is that where I'm supposed to go in three days? Oh, no, those are two locations. Oh, crap. Well, they say if you're scared, go to church. So we'll go to church. <laughs> There's a dungeon in the church? Oh, my lord. What type of scandalous stuff is this? Um, let's, let's go into the dungeon. Why not? Into the church dungeon. The first corridor you see is a narrow... The, the first corridor... It's too late to run. I didn't click dungeon. <laughs> The first corridor you see is narrow and seems to contain several rooms. The more you walk, the more paths resemble a maze. Most rooms don't have any doors, and inside those rooms, there are tables, chairs, and reading materials. Your path is lit by torches on both sides. You continue ahead, moving deeper and deeper into the unknown. In front of you, you see a dark corridor and decide to follow its path. You walk slowly, touching the wall with your hands, trying to avoid any danger that might be in your way. I mean, this isn't the church. How dangerous could it be? And then immediately thinks of the crusades, and you're just like, huh. Well, about that, <laughs> how dangerous can it be? It can be very dangerous. Uh, after walking for a long time, you see that one of the rooms is lit. It's lit! As you enter the room, you realize it is different from the others. It has a wooden floor, golden furniture, and the wall is covered in runic symbols. In the center of the room, there is a marble statue of what appears to be a knight holding a cross. Okay? You feel a mysterious energy inside the place and could swear that some of the symbols glow from time to time. You hear footsteps coming from the hall. That sounds like something I should, uh, mm, hmm. Mm, we're gonna hide behind the counter. I move quickly behind a counter in the corner of the room. A hidden man in a brown tunic comes in the room. He doesn't notice, he doesn't seem to notice your presence. 
He lights some candles and kneels in front of the statue. He takes off his hood and starts uttering words from a language you do not understand. You notice, the you, notice you notice that he has a tattoo on his neck, a uh, hand holding a cross. He remains silent for what seems like... So mm -hmm. I need to stop trying to read fast. I think that's my problem here. You remain silent for what seems to be hours until he finally stands up and walks out of the room. This was a weird experience, but familiar at the same time. You run before someone comes back. I gain one endurance. Look at me. Let's go to the tavern. <laughs> get some ale. Oh well, yeah. Mm. Well, I already said let's get some ale, but I kind of want to eavesdrop on other people. We're gonna eavesdrop. You're sitting in a dark corner of the tavern. Next to you, two people are chattering about a golden crown they found while rummaging through some ruins outside the city. The more mugs of mead they drink, the louder they discuss. One of them lets out that the object is there with them. Oh my lord. Looks like we're about to rob some people. I'm kidding. We're not about to rob them. Unless it seems to be worth a lot of people. Look, 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 look. If I'm going to run around in a different game and look through people's notebooks for plot-related things, you best believe in this game right here. If it gives me the option to eavesdrop on people, I'ma do it. Alright? That's all that I need to say about that one. Um... Uh, they're talking so loud, you imagine you aren't the only one who heard that information. Let's observe. I don't want to show it, because I don't I don't want someone to come. Alright, so here, here's my logic for why I said observe, right? If I asked them to show it to me, they probably would show it, because they're drunk. Like, it sounds like they're getting, like, past the point of any logical reasoning. So if someone's like, hey man, can you show it to me? You know, they'd actually do it. But if I observe, oh, and if they do show it, someone else might try and make a nap for it, thinking like, waiting for that kind of opp that moment of opportunity kind of deal. But if I observe, someone else might do something similar, and I could just take it instead, or I could be a good person and make sure that no one takes it from them. I guess it really just depends on how I'm feeling and the the time it happens. I look around and see a hooded man at one of the tables. He also seems to be paying attention to the conversation. You find his behavior suspicious and decide to watch him. After a few minutes, he takes a oh, he takes a curved dagger from his waist, waiting for the best moment to attack them. He gets up in silence and approaches the table. You see what he's about to do, and then you jump toward them, to and then you jump toward him, catching him off guard and knocking him over the table. He tries to reach for his dagger, which slips from his hand, but you kick it away and immobilize his arm using one of your knees. The two turn frightened to see what is happening, and are astonished to realize that they were almost killed. Shortly afterwards, guards arrive at the scene and arrest the assassin. Look at you. Look at me. I'm cool, guys. I'm cool. Are you proud of me? I'm over here saving lives. Aren't you glad I was nosy? I just prevented two deaths. I am very... I am a strong boy, yo. Let's go... Let's go outside again. And... Uh, oh, now our options are limited because we already used one. Oh... Alright, so, follow the trail, or walk outside the gates of the city. What, what are we doing here? Hmm. Walk it is. You're walking in front of the gates of the city, when suddenly two horses appear on the road. They are pulling a wagon, and by the seam, by their speed, they seem to be tired. Look inside the wagon, and you come across a scary scene. Four men in hunting clothes are stacked on top of each other, all covered in blood. Their eyes plucked out of their sockets. You notice that one of them is still breathing. <sighs> well, okay. <laughs> what type of carriage is this? I'm gonna ask him what happened. You asked what happened, but he has some difficulty speaking. I mean, he he is covered in blood, and he is missing his eyes. I imagine he is in a lot of pain, you know? You asked him what happened, but he has some difficulty speaking. You get closer to him, trying to listen to him better. Opening seals. The man whispers in your ear and then takes his final breath. Without understanding what he meant, trying to find some clue on what might have happened. At first, you can't find anything that indicates what might have caused the death, if something catches your attention. A uh, symbol carved in their chest. A hand holding a cross. Alright, so we've, we have a cult. That is something that is on our hands currently. I gained a wisdom point, guys. I'm a little smarter now. Oh, it's already midnight, and the streets are empty. 
The only people still awake are the guards. You go to the meeting place, being careful not to be sighted. When you arrive, you are startled by what is in front of you. Inside a dark alley, you see a man's body lying on the ground. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Blood still runs from his wounds and soaks the earth around him. He, is, he has just been murdered. You run into the street, but can't find the, uh, can't find the responsible for his death. Can't find the responsible for his death. Is that a missing word? I think I feel like that's the missing word. Looking at the man's runes, you notice a symbol embedded in his chest, a hand holding a cross. Someone doesn't want you to discover your identity, or it's probably just the cult. I've unlocked a hospital. All right, let's. Uh, mm. Day seven. Oh wow, I feel like we're moving along pretty quickly. Investigate rumors about strange apparitions. Talk to a sick man. Help the woman having a seizure. How am I? You know what? We're gonna help a woman having a seizure just because I'm curious as to what my character is actually going to do. You pass by the psychiatric ward at the hospital and you see a woman having a seizure. You run to help her and hold her head so she doesn't get hurt. After a few minutes, she regains consciousness. Oh, okay. I guess I guess I could do something normal like that. She puts her hand on her on your face and thanks you for helping her. Looking at her. You can't understand why she's in the fact psychiatric ward. She doesn't seem crazy. Why are you here? Alright. Isn't that obvious? They think I'm crazy! When I told them what I saw, they assumed that I was hallucinating. What did you see? She proceeds to tell you in detail how she got there. I was in the balcony of my house. The sun had just set. The ground began to shake and a fissure opened on the sidewalk. A man came out of the gate. His body was covered in flames. He noticed me looking at him and in a blink of an eye, he appeared in front of me. I can feel him di staring directly into my soul. Okay. Well, I started to boil and I fainted. Uh. <laughs> Excuse me? Your eyes did what now? <laughs> she takes a strip that is wrapped around her head, revealing that she doesn't have eyes. Oh. <laughs> okay. Alright. I see that. Okay. That, that was. That, that makes sense, you know, eyes boil, so naturally you're gonna, you're gonna pass out and like, you're gonna lose your eyes because they just, I guess they melted or something, that's, that's terrifying. I uh, wanna, they locked me in this room, look, if, all you need to do is find a good neighbor that knows you and knows that you had eyes and was able to see and be like, look fam, they were perfectly capable of seeing prior to this incident and suddenly they have no eyes anymore, like, there's a problem here. <laughs> oh man, you look at her, wondering if the story is true. <laughs> she says she feels uh, different since the incident, as if a piece of her soul has been lost. She asks you to take her life. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Hold up, wait. I, okay, hold up. We're gonna we're gonna roll. So we got a uh, redstone and a blue. Oh no. We have redstone and cosmic stone because I just dropped cos. I mean, I just dropped blue, and I'm too lazy to pick it up right now. Oh wait, I lied to you all. This did go sideways. We have cosmic and we have blue. Blue is gonna be denied. Cosmic is gonna be agree. Let's roll and see what happens. All right, so we're denying her death because blue won by two points. You tell her you can't do it. As much as you believe what she just told you, you wouldn't be able to take an innocent life. You suddenly feel tense, as if something more is bothering you. Aside from the fact that this woman just saw something that took her eyes and, it might, and we might have to deal with it in the future because I have a feeling it's linked to the man holding a cross that has been carved on people's chests as if it was nothing. Uh, she holds your hand and says it'll be okay and that you don't have to blame yourself for your past. You have you look at her startled and ask if she knows who you are, but before she replies, she begins to have another seizure, stronger than the first one. Once again, you hold her head so she doesn't get hurt. The seizure stops, and you feel that she is no longer there with you. Oh, what happened to her then? Did she die? Oh, don't tell me she died. Oh, man. Alright, let's, uh... I kind of want to go back to the church because I feel like the church has more clues, but I also want to go to the castle because I feel like the castle also has some good stuff going on. Uh, let's, we'll, we'll head up the castle. Into the castle hall, look for information. Um, we'll, we'll look for information. Into the castle. Hey, it's a good thing I read your mind and went into the castle. Into the castle during the night looking for information. Information. Wow. Way to go, Joe. 
As you're walking across one of the corridors, you see that one of the rooms is illuminated. Oh, that, that can never be a good thing. You walk silently, trying not to get caught. As you approach the room, you start hearing voices coming from the inside. Go to the hiding place and get the artifact the Order requested. They assured me that if we get that if we give it to them, they will guarantee our salvation when the time comes. All right, you are talking about the hiding place in the last room, right? Yes. Bring it here. You hear a chair being dragged across the room and footsteps uh, coming towards the door. Um. Uh, so we're not supposed to be here because we're sneaking. So we're not going to try and question this person. Instead, we're going to try and hide. You walk quietly toward the last room on the hall. Once there, you lock the door and begin to look for the hiding place. Someone tries to open the door but gives up after a few attempts. You believe that this, that it was, this, it is a secret room, so you look for a passage that might lead you there. After a few minutes, you find a stone brick that stands out from the others on the wall. You press it, revealing a secret entrance. You go down a small ladder and enter a moist, musty room. The place is lit by some torches hanging on the wall, and in one side of the room, you see a golden chest. Oh boy, you open the chest and find a stone tablet containing scriptures on a language you don't understand. Oh, am I illiterate? Is that what's actually going on here? Is my character illiterate? It's a literate robot all over again, except with a person instead of a robot. Um, on the back of the tablet, you find five symbols, bow, sword, balance, scythe, and fire. You believe that this is the object they're going to give to the order. Okay. Okay. Alright. So, uh, hmm. Huh. I don't know where I want to go now. <laughs> I, I, okay. We haven't explored the... Hmm. Let's go we'll go we'll go to the square we've only been to the square once watch a public execution eat an apple walk up to a group of hunters Ex what are you <laughs> can I just say I love how like the variety that we're getting within these options so on one hand you have watch an execution which makes sense because it's like medieval times so like public executions isn't, isn't anything that's like too crazy for this time. Then you have eat an apple, which is like the most casual thing you can do e ever. Just period. And then you have walk up to a group of hunters. Like levels to this. Now let's uh. Let me grab my. You would eat an apple. All right, let's let's eat an apple and see how that goes. A hooded man watches you while you're eating an apple. <laughs> Sir, I will stab you. Don't make me do it. I've done it once. He approaches you, saying he has seen you snooping around the city uh, in search of your true identity. He says he can help you if you agree to do a little service for him. Look, sir, I, I don't know where you came from or how you know that I've been snooping or what type of service you're asking for, but, like, I guess if it's not going to threaten my life... <laughs> Way to a gray-haired woman. The merchant has something I want. If you get it for me, I promise to find out who you are. Huh. I mean, if I don't have to get an item, that's not as bad. And so far, I seem to be having, like, the stealth of Jesus, because I haven't gotten caught yet. Well, aside from when I bust into the library. Other than that, for all what's up, y'all? You shake his hand, sealing the deal. He tells you that the merchant attacked him on the road a few days ago and stole his amulet. Oh, okay. You're speaking with a sly look, so I have the I have the feeling I shouldn't touch it. All you have to do is bring it back to me. I'll distract him while you search through his bag. Okay, that's that's fair. I'm not having to do all the work by myself. You nod, showing him you understand, and then proceed to execute it. He approaches the merchant and asks him about his wares, which are on display on a small wooden counter. The merchant greets him, and the two start talking. You look around and make sure no one is watching, and then you crouch and start searching through his bags. You take all the objects until you realize there is no amulet. Ah, Sir, I will stab you! The two are standing beside you, watching you with a smile on their face. So, you have fallen for it. Now give us all your coins, or we'll tell the guards you were trying to rob us. You have no money with you, and you stay there, 
and if you say that, you will end up being arrested. There's no way you can prove that you fell for a scam, so you only see one way to get away with it. You pretend to take something out of your pocket and stretch your hand out so they can take what you're holding. When they least suspect it, you punch the nose of one of them and run away, escaping through the crowd. That sounds like something I'd do. Oh, I lost a wisdom point. I mean, that's what I get. I, uh, the, the moment I saw a sly smile, I, I stopped. Ah, now wisdom's the lowest out of all of them. But you know, at least we didn't get arrested. So, like, silver lining. Uh, let's... I could use a good drink after that one, so we'll hit, we'll hit up the tavern. You know, order a beer. You sit on a chair and order a beer from the bartender. While you're drinking, a group of farmers enter the tavern. They accuse the, the villagers of mutilating the cattle. We won't leave until we find out! We won't leave until we find out who here was responsible for this, they see. No one seems to care. Everyone is too drunk to answer them. You notice that this makes them impatient and feels something bad is about to happen. One of the farmers lights a torch and threatens to burn the place. Well, alright then! Um, hmm. Let's, let's try to avoid a disaster. You ask how they could be so sure that the person responsible is here. This whole city comes to the tavern at the end of the day. Chances are, he's here. What if it's a she? Then what? Is, is, is that your whole argument? Is it, it has to be a male? What if it's a woman? What if a woman did this? Then your whole argument is invalid, sir! Without them noticing, you signal the bartender and then ask the farmers to explain what happened. They hesitate for a moment, but one of them decides to tell you. This started like any other day until we came back to the farm to feed our animals. Before we went, and we sense a terrible smell and saw lots of flies. We opened the door cautiously, not knowing what to expect. I'll never forget that scene. All our cattle, mutilated. Blood skated all over the place and their organs missing. Alright, before he's able to finish the story, blood starts running down his chest. <laughs> Yo, these medieval people don't play at all. Good lord. Oh man. He looks down and sees the point of a spear piercing through his ribs. He falls to the ground, lifeless. The bartender, bartender went look. The bartender went look for help as she distracted the farmers. He finally came back, bringing the guards with him. Everything is solved in a matter of seconds. Iron with spears, they execute the other three men of the group. Did Mama always tell you never go causing trouble at a bar? Nothing good can come from disturbing people while they're trying to get drunk and forget about the problems of their lives. There's better ways to go about it. You know what I'm saying? Wait till people are outside of the bar. Then they're the guards problem for real. But no, you write it inside the place where the guards actually have to do something about it. Cause you know, the guards are not gonna let you destroy their place where they get their alcohol. They wanna get drunk too. Come on farmers, use your logic. Ah. <laughs> I gained one wisdom point. Oh hey, I got the wisdom back that I lost. As days pass, you continue to investigate the symbol you found on the man's body. Your investigation takes you to an underground hiding place just below the church. Oh man. You wait for a nightfall and then sneak into the place. The environment is dimly lit. You hear chants coming from a hallway. I wonder if I could... Oh man. You follow the sounds which leads you to a room. Inside of it, there are hooded men rearing a figure seated on a throne. The figure rises from the throne and the place becomes quiet. I knew you'd find us eventually, the figure says, looking in your direction. Who are you? And how'd you know I was, I've been looking for you? Famine. Oh, do you really think no one would notice you snooping around the city? I felt your aura from the moment you got here. I just wanted to know how long it would take before you f take for you to find me. What are you talking about? And who are you? You don't recognize your own brother? Brother? But I've never seen you before. In fact, I don't even know who I am. What have they done to you? Only a few days ago, we were destroying that village outside the city. I... Whatever happened to you, let me explain. We're brothers, and we have been brought to this world with a single purpose. To annihilate mankind. I like this look of horror. That was, that was great. That was really nice. I could dig it. 
And he's all calm and casual. What what are you talking about? I don't know if you haven't noticed yet. We are not human. Here on this planet, we're known as the horsemen of the apocalypse. You, my brother, the horsemen of catastrophe. What? Diggity. These these hooded men here, they're all members of a secret cult known as the Order of the Sacred Hand. They believe that mankind will only be saved after the apocalypse is over. They think the Chosen Ones will be saved and go to heaven. Alright? Can't be true. None of this makes sense. Why are you smiling? I liked your look of terror better. I feel like it would have it would have fit more to keep looking like this, be like, no, you know, like a confused state. I also didn't believe they were dumb enough to bring us here. It's obvious that there is no salvation, only chaos and death. Now if you excuse me, I have matters to settle. If you're telling me the truth, I can't let you get out of here. I need to save them. If you want to sort things out this way, I'd love to deal with you. Oh, it's a best of three. Um, hmm. All right, I'm gonna go for a, a counter attack because that is one of our highest strats. Uh, you wait for the right moment to counter attack. You also count the spell in your direction, but you quickly swerve to the right. Jump and step to the wall, launching yourself forward and gaining speed as you kick your opponent in the face. He doesn't react in time and gets hit by your attack. Look at us. All right, so that's round one on us. Um, next we'll go for a strength attack. Without a weapon in your hand, you punch one of the hooded men in front of you and grab his staff. You run towards the host and you strike him downward. He tries to block the attack, but the impact is too strong, throwing him to the ground. I can't believe that our cruelest brother favors humanity. Our brothers will not be as easy to defeat as I was. Oh, well, hmm. I don't know. If I keep, if I, as long as I, I, I guess if I keep increasing, increasing, wow, that's going on a shirt. I need, I really need to start working on some merch. I know it's a little early and I don't really have that much, like, subscribers and stuff like that for it, but I'd rock my own merch. I'd make some cool stuff. You're surprised at what just happened and you feel, you still have doubts whether he was telling you the truth or not. The more you think about it, the more things seem to make sense. The energy you felt attracting you city city, the dreams you have, the pieces of of the puzzle are starting to fit together. If it's really true, you know that you have only one choice, to discover the whereabouts of the other horsemen and stop them, no matter the cost. Sounds about right, sounds about right. Well, let's see, if I were to pick up information, to the castle again. I feel like the castle probably has some information. And we'll go to the underground tunnels. You're walking through the underground tunnels beneath the castle when you run into a corridor infested with black rats. They are as big as medium sized dogs. They feed on dead animals and get aggressive if provoked. You notice that they're agitated, all running in the same direction. You can't tell if they're chasing something or running away from it. Maybe they're running away from me. Well, let's follow the rats. You follow the same path as the rats and enter a narrow dark hallway. If you're careful not to bump into any of them, the place is damp and the walls are covered in moss. You keep walking until you see blue light down the hall. You notice the rats are no longer running and are now crowded in front of the light. You walk carefully among the rats and enter a room in front of you. Inside there are artifacts emi emitting pulsating light. You're amazed to find such objects and feel a protective energy taking over your body. One of the artifacts draw your attention. You get closer and touch it. You feel lighter and stronger. I gain one strength and one dexterity point. Alright. Those are the two stats that I use to defeat famine. Alright, let's hit up the um, hospital? Are you guys thinking hospital? Alright, what what are you guys thinking so far? Hospital? Square? What what's what's going on in your minds? And also feel free to let me know what you're thinking of the game. So far I'm enjoying it a lot, you know? It is pretty wild. I should save the game. You know, I haven't saved the game, and that's pretty important because only you can prevent lost save data. Man, I'm usually like on top of saving, but I guess in my mind, I'm like, oh, it's probably auto saving, which it hasn't said anything about that. So it's a good thing you reminded me of that. <laughs> but I'm feeling the hospital. I feel like there might be something there. I don't know what's in the hospital. I don't know. I also, part of me also thinks maybe investigate the church, because the order is 
the order of the hand. Is it order of the hand? They literally just said it. Bamin literally told me this before I slaughtered him. I can't remember if it was order of the hand or not. We're gonna we're gonna check out the church. And what's the church of church service got? No, I'm gonna talk to a seer. You enter the. Ugh, I'm skipping all kinds of words. You enter a tur turn. You enter a tent behind the church. Inside, a woman is sitting behind a table. She seems to be waiting for you. She asks you to sit down and spreads a deck of cards over the wooden table. You ask her what is going on, and she tells you that she knows who you are. I can see the past, present, and future of any person. It is up to the person to choose which one they will want to know. Ooh. She puts some cards on the table and then looks at you with a mysterious look. Which one do you choose? Alright, so past is important for character context and details. But future is, uh, future is important for the same reasons. Uh, uh, okay. Space roll. I should probably label them. So, Cosmic Dice is going to be uh, um, past. Blue dice, la future, and they're both twelve. All right, guess I gotta re-roll them. All right, we are looking at the future. I'm pretty sure that's what I put blue as. I mean, it's a nat twenty. We asked about the future. She picks up a wooden bowl, throws some ingredients inside, powders and liquids that you don't know. After a few minutes, the contents of the bowl begin to bubble, and a mist forms around you. She holds your hand and recites a few words in an unknown language. Her eyes turn white and the tone of her voice changes. Oh lordy. I see a great battle to come. Blood and destruction are inevitable. The result will define the fate of mankind. And it's up to you to decide which path you're going to follow. When Mr. Spears in shirt, she returns to normal. You're under fear prepared for this con confrontation. I gain a strength point. I mean, if I keep gaining strength points, I'm pretty sure I'll be more than ready. Let's hit up uh, the outside. Yeah. Let's see what's there. Investigate scream from a road. Follow the smoke in the forest. Okay. Well, I'm super strong. So, like, if I need to, I could fight off whatever is causing the screams. Alternatively, I can investigate the smoke, but that might just be a trap. Granted, the screams could also be a trap. Uh, let's, 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 let's investigate the screams. Walking outside the city, you hear a noise coming from the road. Someone screaming for help. You run to see what's going on and come across a group of thugs trying to rob a ragon. Ragon. I guess I'm Scooby-Doo now. They have already killed the guards who protected it, and now they're looting it. You hear a scream and see that one of them is holding a child over on his shoulder. She struggles and asks the man to let her go. Another man leaves the wagon and tries to help the child, but as soon as he gets closer to her, someone slits his throat. Oof. They laugh as he tries to taunt the blood with his hands. One of them approaches the dying man and stabs him twice in the stomach. He falls dead on the floor. Two guards appear on the road. They are coming from the forest and they branch the swords as they run towards the bandit. The, child's on the, the child falls on the ground and injures her leg. The man who was holding her and the other thugs run to face the soldiers in combat. So, the... The, the, uh, yeah, both traps, that's, that's how I was feeling, but it, hey, at least this actually wasn't a trap. We know we're actually good. So, the Skyrim player in me says, loot the wagon. You know, just hardcore parkour. Take what I can. But, I'm on, since I'm siding with humanity, I feel like I need to help the kid. You know? So we're gonna, that's what we're gonna, we're gonna help the kiddo. Go into the child and see that she has a wound in her belly. She's bleeding too much. So you take her in your arms and carry her to the city. On the way, she tells you that she is a member of the royal family and that her wagon was attacked by thugs when they were returning from a nearby village. You take her safely to the hospital and before you leave, she hugs you. Uh, at that moment, you have a flash of a memory. An entire city destroyed, dead bodies everywhere, and a girl lying on the floor be begging you not to hurt her. I gained one endurance point. Alright, so is that is that what is to come? Am I going to end up like... Big move. 
Uh, let's um, let's go to the hospital and see if we can visit her. I feel like that's uh, find more find out more about the plague. Go to the south. Wing. Let's go to the south wing. I feel like that's good. You're walking down the south wing of the hospital when you hear people screaming desperately. You run towards the scream, and a man runs past you. He has a girl in his arms. You notice that the screams are coming from a door that in the hallway. But try to open the door. Success. So wait, are you not concerned about the girl, the the, the guy, literally just kidnapping someone? What, what are we doing here? Catastrophe. My guy, what, what are we doing here? You notice that the screams are coming from a door at the end of the hallway and try to open it, but without any success. The door is jammed and you can see the flames through the cracks. The corridor is filled with smoke and cries can be heard inside. People beg you to open the door. You know how you act how the fire started. Someone tells you that a man used a torch to burn the place and then kidnapped the little girl. Oh, big oof. Do I save many or do I go for the is? My question is, is the, the kid that was kidnapped the same one we just saved from being killed? Well, now, mm, well, she had a wound on her stomach. I don't think they were trying to kill her because they had her over her shoulder. So I, I only assume that they were going to patch her up after they get to their next destination. But, um... Because mm. if it's that child and it's royal family, saving her would help us in the long run. I mean, I guess, I guess the the morally correct thing is to help those in trouble at this moment, right? But I also need to think long term what is going to also benefit me in the future. And saving the the princess could be beneficial, but I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm indecisive, so we're gonna roll the dice. Unless unless you guys have an idea of what I should do. I'm not gonna lie, probably gonna go try to rescue the kidnap kid. Just because I feel like that'll that'll help me endgame wise. As opposed to just saving these people. But we're gonna Alright, no one seems to have any thoughts. So let's go rescue a kid. The exit will hold on a little longer as you try to catch up with the man who went past you. You're at the hospital and see him entering a house. The girl's still with him. You try to open the door, but it's locked. You decide to enter through the second floor window. Wow. You climb the wall and hold on to a small beam, swinging and gain momentum, then throwing yourself through the window. You fall on, you fall on the floor, and as you get up, uh, you see a sword blade pointed at your neck. If you don't leave right now, I'll cut your throat open. You're stuck? I was stuck too, it's okay. I'm afraid I can't do that. You killed all those people. They weren't people, they were... Demons. They were making experiments with children, and they took my daughter. I needed to do something. What? What? That's a plot twist if I've ever heard one. The girl shows up at the door and runs behind the man's leg. She looks at you in awe. Daddy, will you take me from here? Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> so we did the right thing by not trying to help those people. I won't let anything happen to you, sweetheart. He turns and looks at you. Do you believe me now? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. That's 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 my bad, homie. That's that's me. I'm sorry. I I didn't know the situation. I read everything wrong. I'm here thinking, you know, you kidnapping kids for bad things. Turns out you just save a young child. That, that's me, homie. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I should never invade your house. Uh, I'm, that's my B. <laughs> now I feel, t now I feel slightly terrible. <laughs> oh man, we really out here thinking we about to save the world or something. <laughs> At dawn, a purple mist appears in the city center. People in co come in contact with it get black spots on their skin and bleed from every orifice on their body. The beggars are the first victims of the mist. Over time, the fog gets thicker and spreads throughout the city. You can hear cries of pain and despair everywhere, and bodies begin to scatter across the city. A strange energy attracts you toward the mist, but you fight against it. The energy gets stronger, making you lose control over your body and you see stuff walking through it. Luckily, you don't feel any symptoms of the disease. 
You arrive at the source of the power and see a silhouette of a man standing a few meters from you. He knows your presence and look at you. You can see his glowy yellow eyes staring into your soul. Pestilus, look at you, Mr. Spiky Hair. I wish I was super strong like Catastrophe. Hello, brother. I heard about what you did to our other sibling. He couldn't be an he could be annoying at times, but he didn't deserve that. I did what was necessary. You must stop this now. You know, that's not possible. It seems that the old man was really able to convert you. Well, that doesn't matter now. This will be over in a few seconds. Seismic punch, strength plus wisdom. Well, my wisdom is pretty pathetic, so. We're gonna go predict movements because strength and dex is what I have in common. Your opponent's moves like lightning toward you. You try to predict his movements in order to avoid the attack. You notice he repeats the same pattern every time he moves around and you decide to attack, use that in your favor. He finally comes close to you. He's wielding the deck. With a quick movement, he jumps up and appears behind you. You bend down, nearly dodging the slash that would have hit your, hit the back of your neck. Turning around quickly, you hold the you hold the horseman's fist and prevent him from launching another attack. You take the dagger from his hand, then strike him in the arm. He jumps back with a hand wound over with the hand over the wound. Blood runs between his fingers. Get got. I bet you wish you hadn't done that. Now we're gonna go for a quick attack. There's a symbol in the sky. There's a golden bow, and as it appears, hundreds of arrows are summoned. The horseman makes a gesture with his hands and they begin to fall in your direction. You run across the field as fast as lightning and invade all the arrows. You rush towards your opponent and throw a punch at him, hitting him in the stomach. He spits up blood on the floor. Bigu, I've been defeated? How's that even possible? I mean, I am catastrophe, said to be the cruelest of, all, of us all. So by that logic, I beat all of you. Unless you like 4v1 four, four me. And even then, I probably still beat you. Who, who, whose mans is this? Who, who said you could get me? You betrayed us and you will pay for that. Will I really? Will I really? After your brother's defeated, you find a sword laying next to his body and you take it. It's my sword now. After your victory, you feel something powerful rising within you. A supernatural energy goes through every inch of your body and makes you feel stronger and faster. Time is running out and you must find your two brothers before it's too late. Look at us, saving the world. Let's hit up, um, where do you want to go? Let me, let me save while you figure that out. Let's save. Cause personally, I don't know where I want to go, you know? I definitely feel like I'm missing places that I should be going for story elements specifically to get like a deeper understanding of the go outside all right go to the forest investigate strange rumors outside the south uh, gate or visit the graveyard what, what are we thinking I mean I guess if I had to pick one it probably wouldn't be go to the forest. Granted, the last time I did a plane one, I I almost got arrested, and I had to beat people up, which isn't necessarily bad. It caused me to drop in wisdom, but it, that's just to say that doing the plane thing doesn't mean that it's necessarily the worst thing. Hmm. I don't know. Let's uh. How do you feel about visiting the graveyard? Any, any thoughts on that one? Yay or nay? Any positives or negatives? Where did my other guys do now that I think about it? Flashlight. Flashlight. Oh, there it is. Alright. Oh, God. Alright, got the dice. Red is going to be the top one. Blue is going to be the middle one. Cosmic is going to be the last one.
Uh, looks like we're going to the forest, because red won. Walking through the woods outside the city walls, you find yourself in the middle of a clearing. A gray-haired man is leaning on a stone table with his back turned to you. As you approach him, you see that he is reading a book, and you notice that there's a child tied up to the table. She's dressed in rags and seems unconscious. The old man grunts something you can't hear as he flips through the pages of the book. Look here, sir. He's about to over you. Oh, that was my phone. That was almost really bad. My phone's already cracked up as it is. Oh, we. Let me put that away. Don't mind me. Finally, here it is. First, I have to cut out, cut the heart. Then I need to take both lungs and miss them in all in a wooden pot. You believe he is reading instructions for some sort of sacrificial ritual. Do I save the girl or do I interrogate the kid? Wow, did I really just say save the girl or interrogate the kid? <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do some saving over here. You draw your sword and sneak up to him. When you get close, he quickly turns around and blows some kind of powder in your face, making you sleepy. You feel a baby pierce your belly and you cry out pain. The old man smiles as he attempts to attack as he attempts to stab you once more. The pain causes you to regain your senses, allowing you to block this time. You twist his wrist, causing him to drop the knife on the ground. Then you hit him in the head with the Using the hilt to anguish very hard. Then you hit him in the head using your sword's handle. He falls to the ground, unconscious. You burn the book and put the boy on your shoulder. You take him to the hospital so he can recover. I gain one endurance, but I lose a dex. I guess that's okay. Also, I have no idea what happened to the music. So let's let's get some. Um, let's let's see. Let's let's go over here real quick. Hit up YouTube E and D music. Let me turn caps lock off. What does this sound like? I don't need heroic fan. I'll, I'll take some tavern stuff. I'll take some tavern music. That's what I'll go for. Hopefully this is going to get hit with copyright. And then we'll just, we'll just turn it down like that. Because I have no idea what happened to the in-game music. So we're just gonna supplement it so it's not awkward silence on my end. Uh, let's let's um let's hit up the square. No, let's go to the tap. Mm, I mean, all right. So last set we've been jumping from these places. Last time we went to the the castle. Um, well, I don't remember. So we're gonna go to the castle. Look for a way to get stronger, wander around the castle at night. Well, we're already pretty strong, so let's just do a bit of wandering. You walk, you're walking through the castle corridors at night when you notice a blue light shining through the... Let's get some... Let's open another tab. YouTube. Um, let's D&D music. Oh man, this is definitely, you know, really great. This is great ambience music. Thanks, Ad. This is not, this is not. Okay. Golly, how many ad rolls do they need? Alright. Welcome. Oh, the music came back. Good, good. I was really worried about it for a moment there. Yeah, like they have they have so many mid rolls in here. Like, good God, mighty! Walking into the castle corridor at night, when you notice a blue light shine through the cracks of, on a door. As you open it, you get blinded for a few seconds by an intense light. When your vision returns to normal, you're faced with what looks like an alchemy laboratory. Dozens of potions are spread on several shelves, and a glowy blue liquid flows through wooden pipes. Further down, you see children chained to a wall, all in a deplorable state of health. Oh lordy. At one of the tables, you see a book with various symbols and some ingredients. Hmm. This is... Is this actually... Huh. I guess this is... I guess this is music. 
Alright, uh, I believe these are part of an experiment. Someone is using children as test subjects for some kind of disturbing experiment. Uh. Alright, we're gonna hide. So that way we could try and capture the person that's doing this and stop. Wait for a few minutes until you hear someone uh, trying to open the door. A woman enters the place. She's dressed in a red robe. On her chest, you see the emblem of the Order of the Sacred Hand. Today, we are going to try to bring one of you from the dead. Oh. They get desperate and start to struggle, trying to break away from their chains. We've been through it before. We've been through it more than once. You won't be, get, you won't be able to get out of here. She holds a syringe and uses it to drain some of the blue liquid. The roommate approaches one of the children and injects the liquid into his arm. The child cries out in pain as the liquid runs through his veins. She takes a small dagger from her girdle and slits the child's throat. Blood runs down his, her hand as she sees the child dying. She waits a few minutes to see if something happens, but with no results. I'm making notes in the notebook. Let me, let me get you that, that authentic son. You guys even hear that? <laughs> Let me check my, let me check the recording. See. All right, so it looked like it was faintly showing up. Um, I thought it would work this time. I'm sure I had perfected the formula, but I guess I was wrong. The children shriek when they see that the boy who had just died begin to struggle on the floor. Oh, I knew this day would come. She runs towards the boy with a smile on her face. She takes him by the arm and tries to get into his feet. He looks at her. Vomiting blood on her lap, then falls dead on the ground. You hear voices coming from the corridor, and decide to run through the window before you, they notice your presence. Oh wow, I should have freed the kids then. But it's probably too late to go back for the kids. Oh man. Um, let's see, let's see. If I were an adventurer, let's hit up the tavern. A lot of interesting things happen at the tavern. So you relax, talk to people, attend a live performance. Yeah, mm, let's let's relax. Let's just sit and relax, have a nice, calm time. You know what I'm saying? We've been running, jumping, killing. Like, we just need to take a moment to take a breather. After a long day, you go to the tavern to relax. The night goes on quietly. You drink a few beers and talk to the bartender. When you're about to leave, a bunch of troublemakers enter the place. They tease people on the premise telling them to leave and saying they want the place only for themselves. Most customers in the tavern are drunk and don't seem to enjoy the words they're hearing. A group of ten people get up uh, and start cursing the newcomers. In the side of the argument heats up and they start fighting. Chairs fly across the room. Punches and kicks are thrown and blood is spilt. After a while, you realize some people are taking advantage of the situation and steal beverages and coins from the cashier. I'm going to prevent the thief. You feel it is your duty to protect the tavern from thieves. I mean, I protected it from catching fire, so I might as well at this point. You jump over the counter and draw your sword, pointing it at the thieves. Most of them give up when they see your weapon. Others try to get past you, but after a few tries, they also give up. They are just drunk looking for trouble, but are not ready to fight using weapons. During the fight, you knock out two people who tried to attack you with kitchen knives. One of them had his nose broken by the handle of your sword. After a few minutes, the crowd disperses, and the bartender comes to you. He thanks you for protecting his property and says that for the rest of the night, the drinks are on the house. You help him organize the tavern again. I gain endurance. Look at me. Helpful citizen. Free booze for all. Elect me mayor. 2020. Wait a second. We're in medieval times. Uh, d d vote me king after I usurp the throne from him. What? <laughs> let's, uh, let's, let's go back to church. We haven't been there in a minute. What's going on here? Uh, let's sneak around the church. You're walking around the church. Uh, <laughs> same. You're walking around the church during the night when you see lights coming from a room. That's never a good thing. Actually, no, I lied. Because there was one time when it actually was a good thing because it gave us strength and dexterity. So I'm hoping for more of those. But I'm, I'm not. I'm not holding my breath on it. You know. Um, you post the window and peep. See a woman lying on a bed. Her arms and legs are tied with a rope that is pinned to the bed. She is struggling to break free. A priest is holding a cross with one hand, and with the other, a small bottle containing some kind of water. He recites a few words in Latin while pouring drops of water on the woman's head. Oh, she must be demon-possessed. When the drops touch her, she screams in pain, as if they're burning her skin. You notice a shadow coming out of her body. Kinky. Very much so. I guess I guess this is what happens when you're in the church dungeon. Wink, wink. 
Uh, apparently the priest is completing an exorcism ritual and the demon is leaving his host's body. You climb on another stool to have a better view, but you slip, knocking over a candlestick near that that is near the window. The priest startles, missing, messing up the ritual. The, the evil entity quickly returns to the woman's body. Oh. Well, that's not good. The... <laughs> Stop. <laughs> she breaks the bed in two and tears apart the ropes that are holding her. She tries. She uses the ropes to strangle the priest. I'm going to intervene because I felt bad. He was just doing his job, and I was I was over here like, oh, this is kind of cool, let me keep watching. And then I almost caused him to die. You enter through the window, drawing your sword, you leap toward the woman. Your blade rests on her neck, and you tell her to release the priest. She looks at you with a look of hatred and continues squeezing his neck. You press the blade until some blood trickles down her neck, and she finally lets him go. Coughing, wait, he coughs, trying to catch his breath, and thanks you for the help. Um, the demon is still in the room, sir. I don't think you... What are you doing? You shan't... I got distracted when the candlestick hit the ground, so the demon took advantage of that. She's possessed, but unfortunately now there's nothing I can do. The demon almost left her body, but now he came back. It will be almost impossible to make him leave again. I might know a way. Stab, stab, stab. <laughs> he looks at you with a curious look. You approach the young woman, holding her arms tightly and looking into her eyes. She tries to look away, but something seems to stop her. She gets agitated and starts to struggle, as if something is bothering her. She realizes who you are and asks for mercy. But she would ignore her request and continue to look at her. Uh, her eyes begin to emit a bit a yellowish light, and she lets out a cry of pain. At the same instant, you see a black spirit leaving her her body. You manage to exercise her by using only your gaze. Uh, the priest moves away from you and points the crossing and directing the reciting a few Latin lines. You ignore him and leave the church. I gained some wisdom. Hey guys, I'm not as stupid anymore. You see a familiar figure walking through the crowd. He knows your presence and start running away. You chase after him for a couple blocks until you find yourself in a dead end alley. It looks like he wasn't trying to lose you, but to get you into a trap. The sunlight that illuminates the ground in front of you fades for a few seconds. You look up and see a person following towards you with a sword aimed at your chest. With a leap back, you dodge his blade, avoiding being impaled alive. The impact of the blow on the ground throws you back against a couple wooden crates. Your sword. You must be the horseman of war. Alright. Is that his shirt? Or is that his skin? I think that might be his shirt. Granted, I'm not gonna lie. I would have preferred if War was shirtless, you know? And then, like, you see all these scars, like, covering his body to, like, match the theme. That would have been really cool. Yeah, that's what I'm figuring because of, like, this portion right here. But because of it, we don't get to... We don't get to imagine him with like all these battle wounds all over him that he wears with pride or something, you know? You're faster than I remembered. I should have guessed it wouldn't be easy to, to fool you like that. You know, those two, they were pathetic. They deserved what happened to them. I don't really care about what happens to mankind. I actually enjoy making them kill each other. But I'd love to prove that I'm better than you. Well... I hate to break it to you, buddy, but, uh, strength, wisdom. I'm actually at a disadvantage here because of my wisdom being so low. Oh, yeah, that's, that is most definitely a shirt. War goes sneak attack. Most of attacks, you dodge to two of his blows and jump backwards onto, into the shadows. You move like a cat and go unnoticed by your opponent. Before he has a chance to spot you, you charge in his direction wielding a magical dagger. Where did I get the dagger from? Wait! When did this happen? You hit him in the back and he falls forward, but he managed to stop his fall by leaning on one leg. <laughs> I like how his hand is already in the back. It kinda it kinda does look like he's like holding his back. Like, oh man, you're not supposed to that me that. Well, let's go strength and wisdom. Those two combined should be good enough. You summon a magical source and rush towards your brother. He dodges your blow and punches you in the stomach. He split uh, blood but continues to attack. You step back and charge at him, gaining momentum as you shift your weight. He retaliates with his swords and two blades, uh, and the two blades clash. The impact causes an explosion of energy. You two use all your forces against each other until your strength surpasses his and your blade cuts through his armor. He cries out in pain and you see blood run down his throat and your chest. Oh, you. You made a mistake. Oh, what? 
oopsie doopsie, I guess. The only thing that kept our brother from reaching his full power was me. An oath made thousands of years ago prevented him from absorbing our powers as long as we're still alive. Now, nothing can stop him from ending the world. Soon, you will join us. Mm, not if I kill him. If I kill him, then I will be the strongest. The day turns into night, and the sun is finally covered by a blood moon. The horseman of death seems to have regained his strength. All the seals of the apocalypse have been opened, and now the only person capable of preventing the extinction of mankind is you. People hide in their homes, afraid of what has come. Hundreds of undead invade the city, and the castles and gates are being destroyed. Will you be strong enough to stop him? I, um, I feel like we should be able to beat him. I mean, we've, we've, we've gone two for two. Alignment. Blessed. Bless up. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's go to church. Get some more blessing, I guess. People hiding in church and attempted to survive the chaos outside. Ghoul saw this as an opportunity to eat those hiding. Destined of them gather around the building, trying to find an opportunity to attack. A few of them started breaking the boards that are nailed to the church's windows, while others dig the ground, looking for tunnels that lead in to the inside. There are innocent people hiding inside the church, together with all the members of the clergy, all gathered in the main hall. Really, the members of the order are amongst them. A few ghouls manage to get inside the church and start hearing screams. I mean, my wisdom's really low though. I guess I'll attempt it. Although the order is responsible for the end of the world, you are not willing to sacrifice innocent people. You raise your hand, summoning dark clouds up in the sky. A few ghouls change charge in your direction as they notice your presence. You make a movement with your hand toward them with the intention of pulverizing the creatures with lightning bolts. Unfortunately, your energy is not strong enough to keep the clouds up for too long and they begin to disappear. The ghouls catch up with you, so you try to fight them. You hold your ground for a few minutes, but there are too many of them. One of them bites your arms and pulls out a large piece of flesh. You push them, throwing punches and kicks. A small group of people leave the church and run to help you. They manage to kill the ghouls, but you are badly hurt. The remaining people in the church are devoured by the other ghouls. Ah, oh, I lost a strength point. What's going on with the music? Oh. Somehow the 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 one YouTube channel that I like that I pulled up, the one video, it started back up again. Right, let's hit up the uh let's hit up the square. You arrive at the city square and realize how serious the situation of the city is. The stalls are all on fire. This doesn't look very fiery. I think, I feel like the setting should match the words, you know what I'm saying? Burning buildings. At the very least. Precious stone and other objects scattered on the ground and the palace and the place is full of thieves. You see an unexpected scene. Burglars are using car poles to find valuable objects. They enter and leave the houses with haste, bringing with them most varied merchandise. The men push large carts that contain all of their loot. A group of burglars gather in front of a tent and you see that there is a fallen man inside. They set up the tent on fire and go away. The merchant is left behind, wounded and unconscious. You know that if you don't do something, he will be burned alive. Okay. I can save the merchant. I have pretty good decks. You wait for them to get away. You wait for them to get far away. And then you sneak behind the wreckage. Yeah. I'm, I move fast. <laughs> I try to. I try to be. Granted, I don't try to move fast. It just sort of happens, and I read fast, so it's like. But I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that I'm, my words are somehow managed to be entertaining as I read through this. The fire spreads quickly through the tent, and you see the ceiling is sagging. Realizing that you won't be there in time, you decide to do something unusual. With a quick hand movement, you draw a symbol in the air and direct it toward the fire. The air around you begins to move quickly, turning into a gust of strong and into a The air around you begins to move quickly, turning into a gust strong enough to extinguish the flames. You run to help the man who is no longer unconscious. I gained one strength and one wisdom. Hey look at that! I gained a point that I was missing after Oh man. All that's left is the castle. When you arrive at the castle, you face with a deadly battle. A horde of dozens of undead advance toward the castle. Guys try to stop them with, without any success. Casualties, be mm. Casualties begin to increase when men are killed in combat and return as undead soldiers. You feel the magical presence on the battlefield, and you believe it be responsible for the resurrection of the corpses. 
Not the Garza with the Undead. Uh, Endurance Wisdom. I feel like if I go after the Magical Presence, that that would be a better than me fighting off the, the, the ghouls. So we're going to go for the Magical Presence. I know that the guards be able to, won't be able to win the battle if the dead keep coming back to life. You just have to find the responsible for the resurrection bell. You watch the battlefield and you notice a group of heavily armed undead protecting a dark figure. From a distance you can't identify who it is, but you know it can only be one person. Your brother, the Horseman of Death. You take, your, you take a sword from the body of a fallen soldier and charge toward the group. On the way, a, f uh, a few undead archers try to shoot you, but you use the blade of your sword to block the arrows. Upon seeing that you're getting close to the dark figure, this is his itself and it's calm it commands his lackeys to attack you. You take a step aside and dodge a blow from an axe. Then you use your sword to decapitate two undead. In a few seconds you're surrounded by dozen by dozens of enemies that prevent you from reaching your brother. You wield the you wield the sword in both hands and launch a powerful blow that cuts dozens of them. After you slaughter them, you realize the magical presence has disappeared and your brother is no longer on your sight. The undead stop coming back to life. Soldiers finally have a chance of victory. I gained one strength and one endurance. Look at me go. What is what achievement is this again? Let me, I'm gonna look at the achievement real quick. Uh, uh, have 14 or more endurance points. Okay. Uh, start the game. Uh, with the fight against death. Achieve the pure status. Achieve the bane status. Ooh. Finish the game for the first time. The letter. Uh, okay. Alright. Seven hidden achievements. Okay. That's pretty cool. Um. The city of Eden is on fire and mankind is on the verge of extinction. Hundreds of creatures have invaded the city and you have, you are the human's only hope. Every, every decision you have made up to this moment and now it's the time to decide on how your story will end. The dark shadow approaches you, his eyes glow as they focus on you. You feel a huge magical power and can barely move. Your body feels heavier, you feel dizzy and tired. The sky is red and the screams of the people can be heard in every corner of the city. You raise your head and see... He has a pimple on his head. <laughs> I shouldn't be saying that about death. That's mean. That was rude of me. I'm sorry. You know, humans are fascinating creatures. They blame us for everything that has ever happened to them. They make excuses to justify why they behave so badly. We never obliged to them to do anything. It's all on them. We just gave them a little push in the appropriate direction. But you're not the cause of the destruction. They brought it on themselves. They can still be saved. I'll prove it to you. I'm sorry things have gone this way. You were always my favorite brother. So much hatred inside. So much pleasure for blood and destruction. Unfortunately, everything ends now. I like this final boss music. This is nice. So we're going to go for uh, strength and dex. We'll go for purgation first. As you feel the energy present in every cell of your body, you concentrate your spiritual power to create an immense energy ball. Seeing what you're about to do, your brother raises and floats a few feet off the ground. A great aura of dark energy emanates from the horse's body. Red lightning flashes around him and the earth begins to shake. A huge dark energy ball appears in the air above him. You two make a great... You two make a gesture with your hands, making your powers collide with each other. A storm is formed. An earthquake starts opening fissures on the ground and everything darkens. A gigantic explosion forms from the collision of the energy balls, destroying everything around it. You escape the impact, but your brother tries to block the blast and is thrown to the ground. Oh, why are you looking shocked, brother? I defeated the rest of our family. What makes you think this will be any different? Let's go with, um... Let's go with Mirage. You summon two magical swords as you rush towards your opponent. As you head his way, he hurls dark energy balls in your direction, which you evade quite easily. With a quick movement, you gain momentum and jump. You spin very fast in the air with your swords extended to both sides, and they go through your brother's stomach. You land behind him. 
He seems to be enraged and suddenly a giant sight. He attacks you. With a sudden movement, he wields the weapon against you. You roll across the floor, dodging the attack and hitting him against and hitting him again with your blade. The sight disappears and he jumps backwards, injured. Alright. So with the best of five. That means we only have to win three of them, so we're gonna go strength and alignment. So here comes purification! He summoned a beam of light from the sky, pew! Burning everything in his path. The horseman tries to reflect the attack back to you, but is unable to do so. He's thrown to the ground and gets severely injured. What? How? It shouldn't be possible. I am the strongest of the horsemen. Or so you thought. I remember who you really are. Make them suffer. Hey, look at me. We did it. We beat death. Ha <laughs> ha. You're finally able to end the evil that stalked mankind. Oh, oh, no. Oh. So on my screen, it's normal with these achievements. I don't know why for you guys, it's like going off the Richter scale, you know? But um, <laughs> this is gonna be fun to look at in the playback. You're finally able to end the evil that stalked mankind. You know this is only the beginning and that there is still a long way to go until everything is back to the way it was before. People see you as a hero and build a statue in your honor. You use your powers to help rebuild the city, and everything seems to be heading in the right direction. You vanish into thin air. Sog's a story about this era told for hundreds of years, and mankind finds hope again. No one knows how or why you disappeared, or if you'll ever return. Okay. Art, programming, and story by Angelo Par... Par... par I'm sorry if I'm, mis if I'm mispronouncing your name. I'm not good with names. Allison Gundia did the music. English proofread was by Javier Campos. Special thanks to Enrique uh, Fiati, Prusino Pato, Shimmersoft, Carlo Antonio, Jonas Sloan. I'm so sorry that I'm pronouncing all of these names, all kinds of wrong. But um, that was fun. I enjoyed it. Um, I like the music. I wish during the battles, like after like attacks and stuff like that, for for whatever reason, sometimes the music will just like it'll pause briefly and won't come back on again until like you get to select another attack. I don't know why that is, or if that's like a glitch or something. If that didn't happen, uh, I think that'd be cool um i like the music of the game a lot i think death probably had my favorite soundtrack from this game i'm gonna play one more time don't worry don't worry we're gonna we gotta go full evil now because we went full good last time and see how that goes for us um i like the choices there was a lot of choices that we could have made like a lot so the, kudos for having all that set up let's see um, yeah, overall, I just really enjoy the game. New game! Let's do it! Okay. So some of these things I won't have to read again because we already did it. Uh, what? Let's see. I chose freedom last time, so let's go. Let's go strength of character. Um, let's go dog because that was. Because I went four first time. Um, I think I went this one last time, so we'll go, um, let's see, run as fast as you can, I mean, I guess if we're going, yeah, I feel like running as fast as you can will help with strength. After you death, what we've been running for? I feel like if we go arrogance, that'll help us. Alright, we almost had a 9 to start with, which would have gotten me an achievement. Not very dexterous. Um, I already read that stuff, so we won't worry about that. Last time we started outside, so let's start off in the castle. Um, hmm. Actually, let's start off in the square. 
Uh, let's talk to an old man, see how that goes. You see an old man standing on a bench, watching people walk around the city. He's holding a black book, and every time someone walks past him, he asks them to come closer. From afar, you cannot hear his words, so you decide to approach him and see what he has to say. Come, my son. Come and listen to what I have to tell you. We're really bonds in this war. The end is near. No one seems to care. Here are the answers you seek. Let me show them to you. Before the man finishes the sentence, he knows two guards watching him, and this seems to leave him startled. When he realizes that the man starts running away from the guards, noticing that he is fleeing the two to catch him, he jumps over a fountain, but stumbles and falls into the water. When he falls, he drops his book. Um, we're going to pick up the books. You take the book and quickly hide it under your clothes. The guard lifts the man up by his arms, holding him tightly. He struggles, to, he struggles trying to escape, but his attempt is in vain. I mean, he is an old man. After he realizes he won't be able to escape, he starts shouting, saying he stole his book. Luckily, the guards ignore his screamings and drag him away. You can see the expression of hate on his face. That's fine. You take the book from underneath your clothes and orphan it. Unfortunately, the, the pages are soaked and the ink is blurry, and you are unable to read it. You flip through the pages, hoping to find some part that has that has not been stained. You find something that looks like a man, like a hand holding a cross. This is the only clue you had to follow. Oh boy. Okay. Okay. Let's. Uh, let's, uh, we'll go outside. Um, I think the last time we followed the trail, so let's just walk along the gates. You walk in front of the gates of the city, there's only two horses. Okay, so we did this event. Um, I guess we'll ask the guards for help this time. Shout for help, driving the guard to As soon as they arrive, tell them what happened, and they tell you that this kind of thing has been happening very often. Signs of the apocalypse! Stop trying to scare him with your theories. It was probably some animal who did that. You go through the gates of the city, and a nurse runs to examine the wounded man. The guards tell you that they will take care of him from here and ask you to leave. Later, you see a few guards standing in front of the hospital and start wondering if it's related to what happened earlier. They are just standing there as if presenting someone from entering or leaving. Okay. I lose wisdom? That's not fair. Yeah, I don't think I should have lost wisdom. I guess now we'll go to the castle. And we'll investigate at night. You walk you are walking through the east wing of the castle at night. <laughs> when you see two guards having a conversation. They were talking about reports of citizens who said they heard knights riding through the city at nightfall. They must be lying. Only we are allowed to ride horses, says one of them. And the horses are locked up in the stable at night, replies the other. After hearing the conversation, you decide to approach them. Um, so I'm going to go with the first one, because that feels more like roguish, I guess. They both turn your head in your direction, struggling to see through the shadows. Never surprise a man like that. I almost pierced you with my spear. According to the rumors we heard, as soon as the sun goes down, people start hearing horses galloping and winding through the city. One man told me he saw a knight riding a white horse, but that's all. He told me the knight's eyes glowed in the dark, his mouth stained blood. Oh, that's a horseman. Nonsense. They were obviously trying to scare you. After collecting the information you wanted, you thank them and walk away, thinking about what they just told you. Hey, I gained that wisdom that I lost. Alright, information about who I am. I have a locked tavern in the church. Look at that. Let's go to the... Church. And this time we will... Uh, we'll visit the tents in front of the church this time. You enter the tent uh, that is set up in front of the church. The priest is in the back, uh, varnishing a wooden cross. In front of you is a counter with several tagged objects. Some dating back over a thousand years. You read them with you read some of their names. Key of Solomon, Holy Oil, Balsamum of Abraham. In a corner of the room you see a bag of coins. The priest knows your presence and asks if you would like to acquire some of the sacred relics. Only he who possesses the sacred relic will be spared of the day of judgment, he declares vehemently. Mm, how do I know whether they are fake or not? 
shouldn't doubt the words of a man of faith, but if you don't believe me, I can prove it to you. He gets up from his chair and walks over to the counter. With one of his hands, he picks up a, wall, a small wooden statue. You look at the object he's holding. It is a woman, it is a statue of a woman dressed in a cloak. You believe it to be a saint. He asks you to come forward, stating that you would witness a miracle. Look at the woman's statue and notice blood dripping from her eyes. Uh, dub, dub, dub. what type of miracle is this? Excuse me? A, 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 a what? Excuse me? Excuse me? Here's your proof. Curious, you grab the object with your own hand. The wood begins to, to darken. In a few seconds, it crumbles. The priest, the priest takes a step back, terrified what, by what he just witnessed. Stay away from me, demon. He runs out of the tent and disappears into the crowd. You don't understand what happened, but you decide to leave before he comes back with reinforcements. I lose a strength point? How does that lose me a strength point? Well. Let's go to the square and scare that lady. I feel like that'll take us down. We're gonna post to a missing child. Feel the cold blade. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Alright, get your stomach one more word and I'll get you right here. If you do not tell me where you, you took my son right now. I don't know what you're talking about, woman. You crazy. You see in her eyes that nothing you say will make her change her mind. She sees you trying to blame someone and you were chosen and you were the chosen one. Seeing no other alternative, you push the arm that is holding the knife and throw yourself back, trying to dig yourself from bleh. You you push the arm that is holding the knife and throw yourself back, trying to distance yourself from the weapon. In the process, you're cut in the arm. For managing one way. When you get some more safe, stop to see the woman. That was close, but that cut was clearly That was close, but the cut was only superficial, you say to yourself. I gain one dexterity and lose one endurance. Hmm. What will take us what will change our alignment? Hmm. What's uh I think it was explore the forest. Walk the forest, retrieve the light, uh, in the sky, plan, place of ruins. Oh, bonfire! Three bandits. Alright, alright, cool, 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 cool. Lie. They all laugh as they continue to move towards you. You won't fool us so easily, boy. If someone was here with you, you'd probably shout for help. You keep going in your direction. You decide to fight them. You punch one of them, but the other two knock you down. They begin to start kicking you on the ground. Knowing you won't be able to get out of this alive and close your eyes, you're ready to get up. Suddenly, everything goes quiet and the bandits stop kicking you. The silence remains for a few minutes. You open your eyes and they realize that they're just standing there, standing still in front of you, with a terrified look on their faces. They move their heads as if they're following the movement or something. You hear metal clanking noises coming from the woods. Someone else is there with you. The noises stop and you see a shadow in the trees. The thugs start begging for their lives. You feel a strong wind on your face and hear a loud noise as if something were cutting through the air. One of the men disappear. You hear the sound again and the other two bandits disappear. You get up and look around. The shadow is no longer there. I lose one wisdom and gain one endurance. Okay. Um, Alright. So, old boy still dies. We still know nothing of our identity. Did that change my alignment? No, we are still good. But I guess I'm evil where it counts. Uh, or, um, let's go to the hospital. We're not going to help the, the woman. We're going to talk about strange apparitions. You hear rumors about strange apparitions in the hospital and decide to investigate. The nurse tells you that the bodies have disappeared from the mo mortuary and that blood traces can be found in the corridors. You enter the room and notice blood behind the counter. Behind a counter. You move it and see a hole in the wall with blood stains all over it. Two nurses are there with you and are surprised to see the entrance to the wall. You believe it was dug by some wild animal and decide to wait to see if it comes back. After a few hours of waiting, you hear a noise coming from it. A humanoid being emerges from the hole. He has eyes that glow dark. Let the glow no. He has eyes that glow in the dark. Claws and sharp teeth and his skin is gray. He crawls to one of the corpses and takes it in the hole. That was a ghoul. She walks up to the hole and looks inside. After a moment, she turns to you. We need to close this hole, so they will stop stealing the... Before she finishes, the sentence a call pulls her into the hole. Oh my. You can hear her cries of despair for a moment. Then, the only thing that to be heard is the sound of something... 
You can hear her cries in despair for a moment, but then the only thing to be heard is the sound of something chewing flesh. Three other ghouls leave the hole and start sniffing the room, and you closer and closer to where you are hiding until they realize you are there. Until they realize where you are. You pull the other nurse by the arm and lock the two of you in the pantry. They come right behind you, breaking the door. It is no problem, Angelo. Happy to support indie creators and stuff like that. Plus, it looked interesting. And I am a sucker for choose your own adventure games. Like, it, it is my jam. Because it's always interesting to see, like, what, like, um, decisions turn, cause the game to, like, go in different directions. Um, let's see. I don't think I have the strength to hold the door. Let's look for another way out. You tell the woman to hold the door while you're looking for a way out. She tries to hold the door with all her strength. You look for an exit, and after a few minutes, you find an air duct behind a small counter. As you tell her that you found a way to escape, she loses her strength and stops holding the door. The ghouls knock it down, trapping her underneath. They start devouring her in front of you, and you don't see a way to save her. You interduct and run away before they finish their meal. You lose one endurance and gain one dexterity. I'm just losing and gaining this go round. Alright, let's see, let's see. I'm still aligned good though. How do I. Oh, I probably have to do like bad things. So let's see. If I eavesdrop and then act to show me the object, they're afraid to show you the crown, but after a few more sips of mead, they invite you to their table. With a gesture of their hands, they tell you to be silent. While one of them pulls from his cloak a packed drafting cloth, he unfolds the fabric, revealing a golden crown with a white crystal in the center. It's the first time you've seen the metal shine that way. It's unlike anything you've ever seen. You feel an energy drawing you to the object. This feeling seems familiar to you, but you can't explain why. You try to touch it, but a hand stops you. You look to the side and see a hooded man looking at you coldly. He holds a carved dagger in one hand. You throw yourself backwards, preventing the blade from cutting your face. The assassin then uses his weapon to attack the two men sitting in front of you, cutting their throats with a single blow. He wraps the, the crown He wraps the crown with the cloth and escapes through the window. See, I knew it was coming. I, I knew that if I had got them to pull it out, that in return someone else was going to use that as their moment to steal. Ah, it was one dexterity point. Mm. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. let's hit up the cast. No, actually, let's go outside and see if we can trigger that one event. All right, so we'll investigate the streams and then we'll help with the looting. And we'll take advantage that everyone is distracted by the fight and run to the wagon. From the colors and ornaments of the outside, you figure it belongs to the royal family. And wonder how many valuable things you can find in there. You find a few bags with gold coins hidden underneath the seat, but you can't take them with you because of their weight. Uh, you run your hand through a hatch, revealing a false bottom. You open a compartment and see a shiny spear, spear inside. When you touch it, your mind feels lighter and you feel refreshed. You look outside and you see the guards have won, but they are in too injured to move. You run into the forest, taking the object with you. I gain one wisdom point. Does that change my alignment? Evil! Yes! This is what I wanted. Alright, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's what other moments could I do in this chapter that would continue to decrease my alignment? Um, let's see. Um, let's go with. Uh, hmm. Let's go to church. Go after the crown thief? Oh, right. You follow the traces of the thief who took the crown left behind that leads you to the church. You go to the east wing and scout the place for clues until you notice that one of the rugs is wrinkled. As you raise it, you see a hatch pinned to the floor. You pull it up, revealing a ladder leading to the church dungeon. Down the ladder, you enter a room full of objects of most varied shapes and sizes. You believe this is where the thief keeps his stolen items. You see the golden crown on top of a shelf, and again, its energy draws you to it. You reach for it, but a voice stops you. I wouldn't do that if I were I wouldn't do that if I were you. You turn around and see a bald man. He's holding a crossbow. This crown is cursed. If you touch it, you'll get sick and die in a couple of days. I'm waiting for the buyer to get here. 
to my secret chamber. He promised me a fortune. He'll like to see you. Let's see. Do I have enough strength to fight the thief? I mean, he said that the, the buyer would like to see me. Eh, whatever. I'll just wait. It's whatever. You wait for about an hour until someone opens the hatch. He's in here. Someone climbs down the ladder. The person is wearing a hood tunic. You can't see his face. Here's the, your, the order, sir. The thief kneels and hands the package to the hooded man in front of him. Turn the man leaves in the... Here's your payment. Oh, wait, 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 wait. He lifts the man to the ground with a single hand, strangling him. You hear something cracking and realize that thief's neck is broken. He throws the body into a corner and looks at you. You notice he has yellow eyes. Like the rumors. You should have tried to sell me something that was already mine. He walks up the ladder and tries to see you around. You lose one strength point. Hmm. As they uh, pass, his body. Alright, so we read this. Alright, so here's. Who are you? And how did you know I was looking for? Alright, so we're back to Famine again. Alright, so I guess Famine is the one who took the crown. Alright. Are we gonna die here? We're probably gonna die here. Brother, but I've never seen you. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, sounds about right. Oh, man! Mmm. Mmm. There's no catastrophe. Mm hmm. Okay. Mm I also appreciate this game for not getting, like, too religious heavy because some people would have taken this topic and just ran with it in like all kinds of crazy directions. Um, I don't have that much strength. Fire punch! Try to focus your energy on your hands to throw a magic the horseman found notice you're trying to do this and runs towards you with his fist and emanating white light. You feel your hand heating up the flames come across and the flames come from within your fist. You hit each other at the same time but your attack is strong and throws him to the other side of the room. What's, what does Stun do? I don't want to kill him. Uh, the horseman's eyes turn red, and a black ore appears around him. He lifts one hand up into the air and summon... Ugh. He lifts one hand up into the air, and small particles of energy gather above him. Before you can approach, he hurls an energy ball towards you, destroying everything in its way. Without having another choice, you use your arms to protect your body from the impact. The energy is so, so strong that you aren't able to block it. You get hit by the energy ball and feel your whole body burning. I wish I had endurance, because then I would die, for sure. With that weapon in hand, you punch a man in front of you. Uh, okay, so we won. Oh, you were too weak. You have Wait, I missed it then. That was not what happened last time. You were too weak. You would have never been able to defeat our other brothers. I've been defeated. Hey, I died. I didn't save! one event that changed it. Mm. I think I'm gonna end there. Just because that's that was a lot of reading. Reading is a lot harder than you would think. And this is not me making excuses. Like just like off the tongue and everything off the tongue and everything. Like that helps my 
what I'm tr the point I'm trying to make here. Way to go, way to go, JoJo. That's that's a one explanation right there. You deserve a medal. But um, reading a lot takes a toll on my tongue. After a while, I start getting tongue-tied a lot more than I should be, given the amount that I'm reading at the speed that I'm reading. And I guess I could like slow it down. But I don't like going slow. I'm a fast guy. You know what I'm saying? When I'm driving in my car, it's vroom vroom. 90 on the highway. I'm kidding. I don't go 90 on the highway. That's how you get tickets. Remember, kids, don't drive 90 on the highway. You'll probably get a ticket. But with that said, if you enjoyed this live stream, be sure to like and subscribe for more nonsense. If you have a game you think I should play, feel free to leave it in the comments below or in the chat. And I will check it out. And by check it out, I mean I will skim the description and I will look at screenshots. Because ultimately, I want to play the games that you all like to play. And of course, be sure to check out The Fifth Horseman for yourself. Check out. It has multiple endings. Um, maybe I'll come back and play for the, the bad ending. It is no problem at all, Angelo. I might come back and play for the bad ending in a different stream. After I give my face some time to recover from all the reading I've done. Um, and or go for some of the other endings. I don't know how many endings there are. I just know there's multiple endings. But um, like I said, I'll link, be sure to link it in the description so you can support it. It's only like four bucks, but right now it's like 329, I think. And already that's a big steal if you ask me. You know what I'm saying? But um, and I also link the Discord for Eternal Hope because that game is gonna be hype as well. I'm excited to see what Angelo and the rest of the people that he's working with what they managed to put together with all the builds that they have had us like play through and stuff like that. I don't know if I'm gonna talk about that though, so I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just shush, 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 on that one. But yeah, so with that said, I'm gonna get out of here. You know? Oh shoot, that wasn't supposed to pause that, but you know it's whatever. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by, Angelo. You know, great job on the game. I enjoyed it immensely. Um, can't wait to see whatever you create next. Like whatever your next like solo-ish project is that you decide to do, if you do another one of these, let me know. I will gladly play it again and whatnot on stream and what, because I enjoyed myself. I also enjoyed the zany options and whatnot. So, yeah. But with that said, I'm out of here. Peace. Doses.